Okay, we're at the end of the session. Um, this is uh, Rocky's Road to Success. As you can see, I have my dog California around. Callie has been, uh, Adam brought Callie out. I could see within, I made the guardian cry because within about five minutes of being here, I'm like, I don't know if he's the right dog for you because he is a supremely high energy dog. So the first, he agrees. Uh, now Kelly uh, is a great dog because she has, she's older, she doesn't have as much energy as he has now, but when she was in her prime, she did. But she's great at correcting. She's corrected him several times and brought his energy down and really helped uh, him relax a little bit. She's probably gonna pace around because for a dog sitting puts you at a little bit of a disadvantage. I think she thinks he's gonna try to take advantage of her a little bit in a boy-girl sort of way. So, and this is demanding. Like, I want you to play with me. I want to pet with you. You might hear Callie uh, barking something going on. That's going to be Callie correcting him. And I trust Callie because I've trained her. Really well. All right. So, um, in this video, uh, we're going to basically summarize a lot of the stuff we're doing in the session. Now, I was not able to go as far in the sessions I typically do because he really, I mean, he puts his mouth on everyone. Uh, he does no respect for personal boundaries. He jumps up. He just does whatever he wants to do. And again, basically, this is a, a version of being a petulant child. So um, I, uh, want, I'd like the Guardian to incorporate some rules and structure, but because he uh, really uh, is so boisterous, we really first focused on exercise. So the first thing I want the Guardian to do is start an exercise journal. Just get a spiral notebook, write the day at the top, and then every time you exercise, and write down the time, what the exercise was, and the quantity of it. So if you take him out fetching, count each fetch as one, two. I'm going to talk about fetching in a minute. If I forget, please remind me. Um, and uh, then count, so each time you, uh, you fetch, count one, and then first time you do it, that's, that's Cali. Um, do it until he stops bringing back the ball. Um, so you can figure out his maximum number. Her maximum number was four when she was in her, her prime. But that was a really hot day, cool day. It's, it's gonna be a little bit different. So basically, um, uh, I also worked on a laser. He, was, he had a healthy respect for the laser. He was interested in without doing too much. Um, we said, um, He's not allowed to go downstairs. Well, I guess, can he go downstairs? So one of the things you might want to do is just use the stairs, Doggy Stairmaster. Go on top of the stairs, and like, or make, come up here and throw a treat so I hit the and bounce to the bottom. Let him get it, and then show him you have another one. He comes back to you, say, call it exercise, or whatever you want to come up with on command word, and then throw another treat. So after all, he's going up and down the stairs. That's a great way for him to get some action. I'm going to have the party follow me both outside so we can finish this without all the barking, but please keep on recording. All right, let's go outside. Come on, buddy. Come on, Rocky. Rocky, come on. Rocky, come here. Come on, Rocky. 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 Yes. There we go. Good job. Yes. Oh, come on, buddy. We're, in. We're filming, so I'm going to be do something I normally don't do. I'm going to kind of do a little bit of force. Come on, buddy. Oh, yes. There we go. There you go. All right. Okay, normally I don't like doing any force, but in the process of uh, not having you watch me for five minutes more and I'm outside. Um, we'll talk about the door in here in a second as well. So um, start the exercise journal, write down the time and the number of fetches, how long the walk was, um, you know, the number of laser revolutions, how many up and down the stairs for the stairs, count each going down and coming up as a one. And uh, so we want to come up with a cocktail of exercise to put him in a position to succeed. He's, for the next year or two, he's going to need a lot of exercise. A walk by itself is not going to do it. Uh, right now the Guardian's walking him a pretty lengthy walk, but she's doing it at the end of the day. So all day long he's burning up, the sa saving up energy, and then it explodes when she comes in, which makes that greeting that we have in the video below probably more difficult than it needs to be. So um, at the end of the, uh, every time he also mouths you, um, has a barking episode or whatever it is, write down that stuff, the time, what was going on and what he did. And then write down the times that you feed him, as well as anything else that's noteworthy. And then at the end of each day, give him a letter grade, A through F. And then next day, play around with the elements. Maybe fetch a couple more repetitions or throw in a whole extra game of fetch in there or the laser or whatever it is. And keep doing that until you get an A plus day. Now we know what structure we need to provide him in terms of at least exercise and uh, to put him in position to succeed. And I told the guardians that I want them to interpret when he barks or gets mouthy or boisterous as his way of saying, I need some exercise, please. So take him outside or wherever you're going to do the exercise. Exercise him. And when he gets really done, if he keeps on getting mouthing at you, getting really more boisterous, then I want to do the fourth quadrant of optimal conditioning, which we call a negative punishment, which is deducting the humans from the equation. Luckily, he doesn't destroy anything. So if we're upping his exercise, I think the chances of him not doing, not just learning to destroy things are pretty low. So basically, as soon as he does that, with right away, mouthing, boom, 
Get up, don't say a word. Just get up, move the baby gate, go downstairs and watch TV in the basement or go in your bedroom and wait for him to stop protesting for longer than five seconds before you come back in. And if he does it again, immediately leave. So what he's doing is I want you to play with me. I, I, and this is how I want you to play with him. Well, we don't want you to play with us by putting your mouth on us. He's not biting, he's just mouthing, but he wasn't taught proper bite inhibition or mouth, uh, to not mouth and nip when he was a puppy. And now he's big, even though he's still a puppy, he's only seven months, but he's a big dog. And if he gets out and gets the wrong person by, and he's just mouthing on him, my person might think he's actually trying to bite him and punch him, and now that can turn into real aggression. We want to make sure we avoid that. So um, for walks, one of the things we can do for the walks is to, the Kelly is jumping up super high at the window. Um, but for the walks, one of the things we do is get him a doggy backpack. Don't get a super cheap one. Don't get a super expensive one. You want to get one that's probably about, maybe about 60 to 100 bucks. Um, you have a little saddle bag. It's like a saddle bag. You put a couple bottles of water like this in there, maybe for him, maybe two liters, or some sand or whatever it is. Now that gives him a job to do. I'm carrying the water, and it also makes your walk more efficient. Walking is not a very efficient way of burning off excess energy. Now, it's a great way to demonstrate leadership, but he's all over the place on every capacity. I can't imagine that he's going on walks. Uh, and his guardian has talked to me. He likes to roll around the ground and then just refuse to get up. His, her husband's actually had to pick him up to carry him inside. So good workout for the husband, but we'd rather get the dog to kind of do the work. So um, I'm fitting him up with a martingale collar. I'm going to show the guardian how to add the special twist to the leash that will give her more control in the walks. Uh, but I think that, and one thing people don't even think about, exercising your dog before you go on a walk or before you go to the dog park is a wonderful way to exercise him. So you take him outside and he gets to burn off his excess energy. Kelly's doing some funny stuff out there. And then, uh, and then when you take him uh, on the walk, you burn off that top level of energy. Don't overdo it. And maybe vary you know, how, many, how many fetches you do or how much laser you do before you take him for a walk. And you'll find the right combination where, wow, that was a really good walk. Now, I'm uh, gonna try to get the Guardian to have James, who's our dog trainer, start coming by and working with him on loose leash training, which is a nice opportunity to, uh, for James to practice his fetch as well, as well as uh, for the dog to burn off some excess energy and for the Guardian to do this when it's work. The Guardian's coming home from work right now. She can either replace that with James coming by, if she feels uh, what she wants to give him a key or whatever, or uh, what I recommend, if you're coming back and doing stuff, have James come by in the morning or the afternoon and do a, spend an hour with him then so we get that extra energy uh, spent. Now another way that we can uh, burn off his energy is he's really, uh, he's good with dogs. I mean, he's doing some inappropriate things with Callie, but she's good at correcting him. A good uh, doggy daycare might be a good location for him as well. Um, dogs sleep 17 hours a day, so if he's at doggy daycare for eight hours, that's longer than the seven hours of dogs are on awake all day long, because they don't sleep at daycare. Um, now, before you take him to daycare, make sure you exercise him. Don't tell the daycare that. Don't tell people I told you that. Uh, but that puts him in a position to succeed, so he's going to be easier to deal with. And I would be very well with them. Look, he's big and boisterous. He gets in dog's faces, but he, he's not at all aggressive. He just loves to play. And so we want to take him here so he actually gets some socialization with your dogs and burns some excess energy. Uh, there's a couple that are uh, nearby in the Guardian. Try them out. And you know, if you take other places that I suggest you don't like that place, there's other places as well. But finding one, I think that's really going to help him. Um, let me see, we also went over uh, a number of rules. Um, one of the rules would be not allowing on the furniture because the higher the dog sits, the more longer social status they have. Now you can hear the dogs pounding on the window. If I even look at them, that's validating for them. So don't even look. We're, the guardian has been smart. She's moved the screen door over, so it's just glass. There's nothing that he's gonna damage. And uh, one of the rules is you have to sit before I let you in out of the door. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with that, him, with he, start doing that when he is inside. Walk to the door and tell him to sit once. If he doesn't sit within three seconds, walk away, sit down somewhere, pull out your phone or a, a magazine or watch TV, wait one minute, and then go back to the door and tell him to sit again. Give him three seconds. If he doesn't sit this time, walk away for two minutes, then for four minutes, then for eight minutes. Keep doubling the length of time until eventually, when you go over there and you say sit, he sits down right away. And as soon as he sits, you open the door. Now eventually what will happen is from on the outside, you want to do it in both directions, but eventually when he sits outside, walk over there, immediately and open up the door. Otherwise he's going to go back to the jumping. So we want to teach him this is the proper way to get inside. All you have to do is sit at the door and I immediately open that door for you. Um, one of the rules I mentioned is not being on the furniture. Well, he is not kenneled during the day. Surprisingly, he doesn't destroy anything. Um, I'm, pretty surprised, I'm really surprised about that. But uh, since he has, we want to make sure, uh, uh, well, that he, he doesn't break the rules. One of the rules is not being on the furniture because a higher dog sits the more rank or status they have. So I recommend the Darting Guardian gets X match. He's probably going to need to get four, five, six of them to put four on the couch, one in that chair, one in this chair. Now he doesn't have anywhere else. To, he's not going to want to sit on those. And so he's going to help practice. It's going to help him practice sitting on the hardwood floor, on the bench, or on the carpet. 
Um, let me see, what else? Um, uh, other rules, not being allowed to be in the kitchen or in uh, the, uh, uh, the dining room when we're eating or preparing food. Now, I would normally show the guardians how to move them away using the escalating consequences I like to go over. We didn't even have a chance to go over that. We just had to really start the baseline. So what I'd recommend is getting a chain leash and get a choke chain, not for the dog. The choke chain is to wrap around the post right back here. And then we're gonna add the four foot chain and we're gonna move the little credenza here because it's got all sorts of uh, valuables in it. And that way we can attach it to him. We can sit and prepare food or uh, eat in the dining room and he can't get to us. Now he's probably gonna protest like this. Ignore him, don't say a word. Um, just do your thing and when you get done, then feed him. Well, we're gonna talk about feeding in a second. And then wait for him to be settled before you detach the leash. If he's pulling on it, just sit down and watch TV. You might wanna get yourself some Zoe's Hanson headphones, put it in a, you know, some symphony that you can listen to on your phone and when I've been listening to him, as soon as he settles down, walk over and detach the leash. Uh, light switch on, light switch off. Light switch off when you're freaking out and barking at me. As soon as you're calm, I go and take you off the leash. So it yeah, gets you free. Uh, let me see, I went over a couple exercises with the Guardian. I went over a focus exercise. I also went over a leave it exercise. For the focus exercise, remember uh, the Guardian was a little bit slow in raising it to her nose. So make sure you're one second and then one second. Uh, for all 12 treats, I do hold 12 treats in my hand, in my off hand, and hold it between your thumb and forefinger and, and use your leg as the last one, uh, last point of contact. He'll lick your hand, but as soon as he looks up at your face, raise it. And it his mouth. When you're, when you're carrying it from your nose to his mouth, you should see his eyes and the treat at the same time. Pop in his mouth and say the word focus. Do that for all 12 treats. I'd like each guardian to do this with him twice a day. So that's four times he does a day. Now, after he gets to the point where he's pretty much looking at you right away, they go one second, two seconds for all 12 treats. Then maybe the next time, three seconds for all 12 treats. And we want to get up to the point where 15 seconds within a week for the, la for the, uh, for the at the end. Um, once you can do it inside, then I'd like you to go outside, let him do his business and run around the yard and have fun. Then bring him up on the deck and sit down on the deck and do it outside. But when you do it outside in the deck, we want to make it, it's harder because there's a lot of distractions. So you have one second, one second. And then you might do one second, one second for three treats. Then you might do the next three treats, two seconds. And you'll go at his pace. But if you ever do one and you're going slow and he looks away or gets up, whatever number you were at, always count in your head. Back up the next time and practice the previous number before he moved away. Um, I'd like you to do that every, uh, twice a day for, uh, for, for probably, uh, and get to the 15 seconds for a week. Uh, and then at that point, you're gonna uh, practice out on the deck and you can move faster progress there. Then you can actually do it when you're in the backyard and he's just kind of hanging around and say, focus, he looks at you, raise it, and just go straight to his mouth and pop it in. It's just a great way to redirect his attention. And the other thing uh, I went over is leave it exercise. Now, I have videos for the focus and the leave it, so if you forget how to do these or your husband uh, wants to watch, let me know and I can embed them in the link here or just email you the link. So we're gonna drop it and immediately get ready to cage it. We got to the point where we're dropping it and holding our hand here and he wasn't going for it. Never give him the treat that you drop. Always give him from your other hand, otherwise it teaches him just to wait. What we're trying to do with the, with the focus exercise or the leave it exercise is to help him develop some self-control but also incorporate a valuable command word. Leave it means leave it alone. And we're rewarding you for leaving it alone. So once you get to the point where you drop it like that, he, he just looks up at you, give him the treat and say drop it, or leave it, excuse me, every time you put it in his mouth. And then pick the treat back up and do that again. Eventually you get to the point where he's looking at you right away, then wait one second. Then raise it and give him the treat and say leave it. Then two seconds, and the idea is to progressively elongate this as well. Um, there's a lot of versions of it that we can do beyond that, but I think this will help him start to develop some self-control, which he badly needs. Now, I'd like the guardians to make sure that they are eating something before they feed him. So since they're not gonna eat probably at the same time that he does, just get a chip or a crack or something you can eat in four, uh, five or more bites, then, and there's food in his bowl, and he's waiting for to eat his food. Now, you can use the chain deal if you need to. Um, I prefer not to do that, but in his case, it might be the easiest way to go about it. Um, let me see, what else? Um, what, what did I say that I wanted you to talk to me about earlier? Fetch. Fetch. Um, so for fetch, what I do is I say fetch three times. As I throw the ball, I say the word fetch. When the dog picks it up with its mouth, I say the word fetch. And then what I do is I have a treat ready. Now what he was doing is he was trying to get his guardian to chase him, and they were probably take, trying to take the treat or chasing him, and that's fun for the dog. Well, we want to teach him that you got to bring it back to me. So what I do, uh, I have a Dalmatian in Quest, and he is not, Dalmatians are not natural fetching dogs. And so what I've got, actually, I've got part of my yard cordoned off, I kind of make it a big C that he can access. So I throw it on one side of the C, and I go to the pinch point, and when he has to come back through that pinch point, I have five treats. I give him a treat. I don't try to take the ball. I just hold the treat in front of his nose. When he drops it, I pop the treat in his mouth, and I say the word fetch. Then I put another one in his mouth, fetch, I do it for five treats. I want him going, holy cow, what did I just do? I just got the mother load of the delicious treats. 
And now I'm getting, now I'm down to three treats and eventually you just do it one treat, but you're helping, uh, we call this a jackpot, where you give him a big reward for doing the behavior you want. Fetch is gonna be huge for him. If we can get him to fetch, that's a wonderful way to go outside and burn off some excess energy because they're in their pursuit mode. They're running as fast towards it as they can. Um, so, like I said, the exercise journal is really going to be important and putting him in a position to succeed by burning off his excess energy through the doggy backpack, dog daycare. Um, something else you should do is Google scent games, um, like sniffing. For dogs, he's a hunting dog. He's got a bunch of lime marauder and I'm pretty sure pointer and a lot of other stuff in him. So we may put him outside and then hide five treats in the room and then come in and tell him hunt or whatever the word is. Then he's got to find them. And there's different ways you can do it, a whole bunch of different set games. But I sat down to prepare my taxes for my accountant to do my taxes, or to provide books, and I sat down for six hours. I'm an athletic guy, I work out, I do interval training, I hike, I bike, I do all the rest of this stuff. I sat down for six hours, I got up, I was exhausted. And I wasn't doing anything but sit on my butt, but I was using a different muscle. Dogs don't use this muscle very often, so it's very draining. And that's a nice exercise you can do where it redirects his attention, and he's doing something inside, it's, it's constructive, it's positive. Uh, and remember, anytime you give a treat, he should hear the command word after the treat goes into his mouth. The guardian was sometimes doing the focus exercise and going focus before she put it in. So always after. Um, I also went over petting with a purpose. I didn't really talk about passive training, so I'll talk about it in this video. Petting with a purpose is when he demands attention. He barks, he paws at you. Well, if he ever does this when you're petting, you immediately stop petting. That's a dominant spot. But if, you, if he just is barking at you for attention, he wants attention, tell him to sit. When he sits, pet him under his chin and say exclusively the word sit. Don't say good sit or what a smart dog you are, how lucky, how you did what I wanted you to do. Just say the command word. They learn through association and repetitions. The more you repeat it, the easier it is for them to understand. So what we're saying is when you tell me what to do, nothing happens. But if I tell you what to do and you do it, that's a great way to get my attention. If he's already sitting, ask him to come sit over here or ask him to lay down or do something to change his state. I would not recommend shake. He already puts his paws up on you way too much. Um, after a while, what will happen is he will start coming and sitting in front of you to prepay for attention. Look, I'm sitting. Can you pat me behind this ear? Make sure we recognize that and reward that. Otherwise, he's going to go back to jumping up on you. Um, and so uh, I also have a watch for this, like say paycheck. So I come in the room and see somebody's petting the dog and the dog's standing and say paycheck. That's my way of saying, I think you may have forgotten to pet with a purpose. Because even if you just want to pet the dog for fun, you should still ask the dog to do it. This is going to help flip the leader follower dynamic and help him start to respect the humans as authority figures. And again, if he's prepaying for attention, sitting is his way of asking for it. That's a very polite behavior. We like that behavior. Um, so uh, let me see. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about mildly in a second. But uh, the other thing that I like to do is passive training, which is waiting for the dog to offer you the behavior on their own. So we teach puppy class, and a lot of times we have puppies that won't lay down in the class because there are all these other dogs. But what we tell the guardians to do is every time you, you're at home and the puppy lays down next to you, immediately within three seconds, pet it and say the word crash or chill or whatever the word is. Try to come up with funny command words. Dogs should read your facial expression. You're probably exasperated about him about certain things. So if you say certain funny command words, uh, like crash means lay down, then he starts feeling that that, you know, then he may, I made everybody happy. I'm gonna start laying down more often. Make a list of the command words and make sure, and say vocabulary. So most of us don't realize how many versions of the command word we use. Come, come here, over here, dog's name, whistle. Tap my here and there, you know, the dog's nickname and something else. Now the dog has to listen to all these versions of the command words where they don't speak English. For us, it's easy. For them, it's more challenging. If everybody says come or attention or whatever the word is, uh, the, then it's going to be easier for the dog to recognize those things. But try to come up with funny command words, one word commands, and don't conjugate. No good, no go, no bad, just the command word. I often say the command word twice. I actually had a conversation with a client about this earlier today. She was a little confused. If the dog knows the command, I say the command word twice. Once during the command stage, once during the reward stage. So the dog's sitting here, I say sit as a command. The dog sits, I pet it, and then say the command a second time after I start petting it. So I'm reinforcing that the sit is the reason that you got the attention. And dogs feel good about themselves, their nose is parallel ground tilted up, so that's why I try to get the hand of petting under the chin. Now the guardian had been letting him chew on some old shoes, some uh, gloves, some mittens and stuff, but she jumped to old she didn't need. The problem is he can't tell the difference between good shoes and old shoes. So we don't want him to chew on any inappropriate human items, and uh, he's chewing on the remote control. I'm gonna, do a weird shift here, you can use the remote control for the leave it exercise as well. So practice leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, then pull out the remote control, drop that, leave it. So you're rewarding him for leaving the remote control alone. That helps build a positive association with the behavior of the dog, because he's destroyed a couple of remote controls. And make sure you don't leave your phone down, because he will definitely do it to your phone as well. Okay, so mouthing and nipping. 
um, uh, is uh, dogs, when they soothe uh, or they're stressed out, they like to chew on things to soothe themselves. So I went through getting like a water buffalo horn, nyla bones, antlers. I think I mentioned, forgot to mention antlers. Antlers are great as well. We want to get a bunch of hard items for him to actually chew on, real bones. And we'd also like to get some edibles. The edibles would be great for when we have uh, the, our, our kids or grandkids come and visit us. We can you know, set the dog up for success by exercising at first and maybe exercise it three times before and add that to your exercise journal. And then you look at what exercise we got it before and okay, next time you come over, we're gonna try something else. And keep on adding more exercise until when the dog come, the two kids come over and you can have them do the same thing that I showed you with that video. So just have them sit there and wait. If he's all excited, then that's when we're gonna make the most mistakes. So if we teach the dog the only way that humans are coming inside is if you're calm and relaxed. And every time they come in, they just sit in that chair right there. Man, they used to come in. Now I have to calm down. And you'll find him calming himself down faster and faster. But if he's calm when your grandkid, your grandchild comes in here, he's going to be much more easy to deal with. And it's probably going to help the grandchild feel more comfortable around him. He's not aggressive, but he's just so boisterous. He's just, he's scared the, grand, the grandchild. Um, so set him up for success by exercising him ahead of time. So if he does mouth you, or, and at any point, if his teeth touch you, even if it's accidental, it's not even mouthing, yelp like a little girl, like, ah! and then freeze. He was freezing for a second, then he was going back to it. If he goes back to it a second time, I would pull out an antler or a nylobone. Now, if you just give it to the dog, they won't be interested. You have to kind of tease him. So if this is the dog's head, I would tap him here to tease him. He goes here, I tap him here and tease him. I tap him on the head. You don't want to tease him to provoke him, but we want to get him trying, you're redirecting him to the appropriate chew item. Then eventually he grabs it and let, make him pull on it, then let him win. Maybe it takes his trophy off to the side and goes and chews on it. So that's a great way to redirect him into doing that. Now, if you, neither, neither one of those things work, then it probably means that he's tired and he needs a nap. Now, we don't have a kennel for him, but what we could do is just have the guardians use the fourth quadrant and the negative punishment and immediately go downstairs and watch TV downstairs. And what he learns is when I put my mouth on people, they immediately leave. And again, when I say immediate, it has to be like within one second, you're moving towards downstairs. And don't retort, don't yell at him the second time. You yelp the first time, then we redirect the second time. And if you do redirect and he takes the item, immediately pick up another one, put it in your pocket so you always have one to redirect. And then the third thing is we immediately leave and go downstairs. So you're trying to get my attention, well guess what, putting your mouth, mouthing me or teeth on me gets the exact opposite. And if your timing is precise, after a while he'll stop doing that. And if we also pet with a purpose, he'll start prepaying for sitting. And passive training, which I promised to talk about earlier, is just waiting for the dog to organically offer the behavior on his own. So every time he comes to you on his own, pat him and say, come. You didn't ask him to, but it's still the end result you're looking for. Every time you do that, you make him much more inclined to want to come to you when you actually call him to come. Do that with for come, sit, down. Uh, my, I tell my dog to grumble this way. Every time I come home, he'd be like, and he was all excited, so I just start saying grumble. I say grumble, he'd go, and does it on command. Um, name all of your toys. So you know, call that one orange, call that, you know, Kongs are Kong, you just call it a Kong. But you know, antler can be all antlers, uh, water buffalo can toss maybe just tusk or horn or whatever you call it. But he has different special plushy toys or other things, you give them all a name. Every time he brings it to you, say the name and pet it. And so now you're creating a vocabulary which makes it easier for you to communicate more effectively with him. The last thing I'm gonna go over is uh, the leash and walks. Now hopefully we're gonna set up in-home dog training sessions with James, he's gonna come by and, and work with you on this. Uh, but when you are taking him for a walk, as soon as he recognizes you're taking him for a walk, he gets all kinds of excited. And like I talked about earlier, excited is an unbalanced state of mind. Most humans interpret excited for happy, and we think that's a good thing. But it's unbalanced. He's not going to perform well. The energy your dog has in the house before you leave the house is the energy they're going to carry with them on the walk. So one of the tricks you can do is, this: uh, the dog getting excited when you pick up the leash is a prime example of classical conditioning, that Avlov's dog. I pick up the leash, means that we're going for a walk. Something great is gonna happen after the stimulus happens. So I get all excited as a result of that. Well, practice leashing him up when you're not taking him for a walk. So you completely break, uh, is this another drill? Remember, every time we used to put this thing on we walk, now we're just, no, bummer. Oh, we're walking? And now you kind of catch him by surprise. So I do that in two capacities. The first way is I'm walking toward the leashes. Keep the leash in the space, same place. Keep it somewhere nearby so you can do this because you'll understand why I explain this. As you're walking the leash, as soon as you recognize, he's gonna, I know where we're going, follow me. He's gonna run ahead of you. For dogs, whoever's in front is the leader. So as soon as he walks in front, you turn around and go sit back down and watch TV. He's saying, oh, we're not going. He comes back, are we going or what? Wait for him to settle down completely, then get up. I had one guy, it took 45 minutes of walking back and forth to the leash before the dog figured out and walked behind him the whole way. When you get to where the leash is, tell him to sit. 
Once he sits, reach for leash. Don't even plan on touching it. Just reach your hand up. As soon as you reach your hand, he's going to wiggle. Pull your hand back. You can either wait there if his energy isn't too high. If it's too high, walk all the way back and sit down. And then we start again. And this is the benefit of doing this at times where you're not actually going for a walk. So if you stop after five attempts, you don't care because you weren't planning to go for a walk anyways. Normally we have very busy schedules and we're planning, on, we, I have 28 minutes, I can walk you and then I can do this, this, and then the dog doesn't cooperate. And now we get angry with the dog and the dog knows we're frustrated. He gets frustrated, it's a negative experience. So if you have five minutes between com you know, uh, commercial break, practice releasing your neck for five minutes. So eventually, at first you'll, if the leash is here, first you'll only reach this much, then this much, and this much, and keep going at the dog's pace. I, my, I had one dog, I had to go like this same distance about 15 times before we actually figured it out. So just go at your dog's pace. Eventually, when you get to the point where you can touch it, when you pick it up, that usually causes them to get up. At any point, once you told them to sit, they have to stay seated. Anytime they get up, I stop what I'm doing, and if he won't sit, and I tell him to sit once, if he didn't sit right away, then walk all the way back, and then you're done practicing for a while. Or just wait a minute and try to get um, once you actually can pick it up, you stay seated, then I jiggle the clicking sound that it makes. And then I start reaching for him. And at any point he gets up, I put it back, and I stand there and wait, or I go sit back down. Eventually, he'll stay calm the whole process for you attaching a leash. Then when you start to walk, that's the energy you have. And once you have a leash on, if he starts running towards the door, just drop the leash and go sit back down. Wait for the energy. What you're saying, for any capacity, whether I'm coming home, I'm petting you, it's dinner time, I'm, I'm letting you off the leash or whatever it is, fetch, the only way I'm going to engage with you is if you're calm and balanced. And he will start, if you're precise in your light switch off, he'll figure this out and start offering you that behavior faster and faster until eventually that's the only behavior he'll offer you. This is the part where I usually bring the dogs up, but they finally just stop barking outside. So um, this is uh, Rocky's Red Map to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it. 